Hello ladies, this is Adrian from ProductionCrate.com. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this cool magic magey effect. I don't know, with a few tweaks it could look like something from World of Warcraft or Doctor Strange or Skyrim or any number of things really. Definitely looks pretty sweet though, so um, I think rather than talk about it, we should just hop to Lego. Okay, so I have done a couple of things in preparation for this tutorial. The first thing is I have this footage already prepared, which is basically, it was two bits of footage under completely different lighting conditions that I've gone ahead and just pre-spliced together. When I shot these, just a, a fun tip, um, I have these, you can kind of see it here, little pieces of tape on the floor, so I knew where to keep my feet. The um, Transition between them is a little bit of a jump because obviously you're not going to get that perfect because I had to, you know, do my uh, my award-winning acting and then I had to go turn on all the lights and turn off some lights and go back to my spot and shoot another piece of footage. So obviously not perfect, but I think we're going to do a pretty good job of disguising that. That's fine. The other thing that I've done is I have gone ahead and uh, rotoscoped this as well so you don't have to watch me do that. So I have this mat here. Let's hop to it. This is a uh, tutorial based on kind of the magic circle look. So I guess uh, that's not a bad place to start. So my favorite one is actually this pink one here. The uh, It's called Magic Circle Fairy. Let's go ahead and download that. All right, let's go ahead and import that son of a gun. My problem uh, that I'm gonna run into now is that this kind of animates on and off and it looks really good, but actually I want this to just appear. I don't want it to animate on. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I might pick a point where it's kind of starting to go dark, but not really faded away yet. And go ahead and just uh, right click on that and come down to time and hit freeze frame. And then I'll pull in another copy on top of it and Maybe change this to a lighten transfer mode. The lighten transfer mode is going to make the lighter colors show through. So it's going to be as light as possible, but it's not going to like multiply its own lightness. So it's not going to blow out or anything. So this way we still have our animation, but our circle does not disappear. So I'm going to actually duplicate this, pull another one over here. I'm not going to put it here so that one fades out and another one comes in. I'm going to overlap them so that it never fades out. See, it's, it's here the whole time. So it's moving, but it's not fading out. I think I've I've uh, done a lot of explaining about this already. I've kind of talked your ear off. I think you get it. You guys are smart. I know you're smart because you're users of productioncrate.com. So let's go ahead and pre-compose all those fairy circles together. Um, but the color here obviously is not gonna work for us. We're gonna need it to be blue. But let's not concern ourselves with that right now. Let's just tint it just to be, uh, you know, gray. And I'll go ahead and make this a 3D layer as well. And we'll just eyeball it, put it down below my feet here, turn it to kind of match the perspective of the ground a little better. Of course, I have this square on my floor and I have these walls as reference to use to make sure it's lined up. Not necessarily perfectly, but uh, you know, not horrible either. That looks acceptable. We can just scale that son of a G up. I want it to be pretty big, um, but I don't want it intersecting these walls, so I am going to move it forward. Maybe cheating a little bit. I don't know if I'm technically supposed to be standing in the center of it. I've never used magic for real before. All right, so that looks dope on a rope. So let's go back to this footage create website and we're gonna go find the dust and smoke section. And there's these super sick assets in here, these atmosphere bursts. These ones are pro effects, unfortunately, but come on, look at them, look at them. They make the whole thing worth it. I'm gonna take this one, number three. I'm just gonna download it. Okay, so let's import this in as well and drag that on to be on top of the circle. And now let's line it up in time. So what we need to do is we're solo just our footage right now and find the spot where our lighting changes. There it is. So let's take this smoke asset here. And so we wanna move it to start like when the lighting changes. However, I'm gonna cut off a few, the first few frames to kind of make it more chaotic. So I kind of want it to be already spread out to roughly the size of the circle itself, right? So that looks good. This doesn't need to be 3D. We're gonna leave it as a 2D element, but let's change the transfer mode of it to be screen, turn our circle back on. 
so that we can kind of line it up. I'm going to flip it horizontal, but then this is going to make it so we have to rotate it, which is fine, of course. All right, that is looking pretty not bad so far. Obviously, the fact that it appears over our Oscar-winning actor's body is an issue, but that's why I prepared this rotoscoping beforehand. So let me just pull that body mat in, and for simplicity, I'm going to add an invert effect to it, change our white to black and our black to white, and just change the transfer mode of it to multiply so that it shows up black over these white elements. Also add a new black solid in the background so that I don't have that white chunk at the top. That's cool. And then just grab all of those and pre-compose them. And then if we change our transfer mode back to screen, it's going to composite over all of the footage. And now we can color correct it as a complete unit. So I will. I'm going to add the color vibrance effect from Video Copilot. And we're just going to want to make it match this light that's going on in the scene. So we could use the color picker to get us close. And, you know, that's pretty close. I'm going to brighten it up a little bit. So adding a glow effect is really going to help um, add kind of a light wrap because you see here my legs. Uh, it's, it's just really this it just looks bad, basically. So let's just add ourselves a glow. Yeah, put that on and uh, just change the radius way up. And then we can change things like the threshold, maybe move it down, maybe move it up, depending on your footage. And then also the intensity is up to you as well. You can also experiment with the color vibrance and the glow effect. You can change the order of it because sometimes it looks better if you color and then add the glow. And sometimes it looks better if you glow and then color. So yeah, I am pretty happy with the way this has turned out so far. One thing I would like to do just to finish this portion off is to add some smoke coming up between the legs here. So he's not just standing on top of all this smoke. Obviously we need most of it to go behind the actor, but some of it should be in front. So uh, that's not gonna be hard at all. We can just open up that pre-comp with all our stuff in it. And we're already in dust and smoke, so let's find um, a dust puff to put out in front. There's a lot of good choices here. So I think I'll keep it simple and just go with dust puff number one which is actually really cool. Um, it's got some debris coming off the bottom here, but we can chop that off, we can make it work. What I like about it is it has this really nice turbulence to it, which is just nice natural looking turbulence. So let's drag it in, align it in time. Again, I'm gonna cut off the first couple of frames. I'll give it a light and transfer mode like the other layers. Put it down over here. We're gonna add a mask to the bottom and I'll let this mask come up to the top of it as well. Feather that out just to make sure I don't have any hard edges or anything like that. And just make sure that you're happy with the positioning and size of it. And then I'm actually going to fade it out over time so it's not still hanging here in the air when it's no longer needed. It's good, you know? Um, so you may have thought it might look a little bit weird because this smoke in the background is CG and this smoke here is practical. But as you can see, when we kind of add our, our other effects, our color and our glow, it it blends them together nicely. It looks good. Let's also add in our lightning bolt right now. So the way I'm gonna do this is uh, it's pretty hacky and cheaty and easy because we're just gonna go back into the magic and power section and we're gonna scroll down to find our old friends, these Harry Potter style beams. And we're gonna find this one here, number three, that looks like a single bolt of lightning. We're gonna download it, bring it into the composite as well. We're gonna make this one an add transfer mode because it needs to be super bright because it is lightning. And just for the sake of ease, let's move the anchor point of it with this pan behind tool here to where it actually will be hitting the ground. That'll just help us position it, right? So here is where the lightning strike needs to happen. So we'll put it right here at my feet and then we can rotate it so that it kind of aligns with my body better and then shift it in time so that the brightest point where it actually hits is right there. And then hit T to bring up the opacity and we're gonna fade it out as well over a few frames. Before I was talking about how the change in the footage was erupt. If it wasn't before, it certainly is now. This is gonna sound weird. We're gonna disguise the fact that it's erupt by making it more abrupt. We're gonna add a new solid and make it a similar blue to the rest of this and start it right here where the change is change the transfer mode to add. It doesn't necessarily have to be at 100% opacity right here, but we want it pretty bright, so we can bring that down a little bit. I'm gonna use 44 right now. Using page down to head forward a couple of frames, fade it out to zero, right? 
So awesome, it adds a lot more energy to this. Okay, so that's that, um, all that stuff done. For now, I'm just gonna turn off everything that we've done except for the footage because now we're moving on to something completely different. So I'm gonna find the part in the footage where I set up my hand. This is gonna be where I want the second circle to appear and start shooting lightning. So right now I'm gonna add a new null object, which we're gonna to use to hold some tracking data. So why don't we just call it hand track. We can have it start right here. And let's go ahead and track our footage. So if we click on that, I don't have my tracking window open right now. So I'm gonna hit window up at the top and hit tracker. Let's do it, let's track the motion of the hand. So I'm just gonna choose this high contrast point right here between those two fingers. And I feel like this should be a pretty easy track, so let's do it. This footage is gonna be sped up in the final tutorial, but actually this is going really well. It's tracking pretty quick. So here's the track done. As you can see, I have this one keyframe here that's kind of jumped out and track screwed up a little bit. Let's just delete it, whatever. So now here in the tracker window itself, Hit edit target to make sure it's that hand track null and apply it. So now we have a null object that is stuck to my hand, which is great. Um, let's bring up the website again, and we're gonna need another one of these magic circles. So I'm gonna pick this electric one, download that. You could use the same one, that would be fine. I'm certainly not going to. Okay, let's import that into the project, import it into the composite. So we'll need to start it at this point where we decided that it should start. And I'm gonna go ahead and make it a three dimensional layer and parent it to the hand track. I'm not gonna concern myself with figuring out what angle it should be facing because it's gonna become easier in a little bit. I'll show you what I mean. So let's just place it over the hand, get the size about right, and just play it through to make sure it looks okay. Oh yeah, that's pretty good, pretty good. I'm going to make it a screen or an ad transfer mode. Screen will help us keep some of the detail, especially since it's been scaled down so small. Um, so let's go back to our magic and power section again and go back to the Harry Potter style effects again. And we're gonna pick the other one with the lightning bolts, which is magic spell number four. Let's download that, we'll import it. And to figure out where this should go in time, let's scroll through to where the circle looks like it's fully operational. And we'll bring in our lightning bolt spell and we'll start it right there and change it. Since this one has a black background, can't see what we're doing. So we're gonna go ahead and change that to a screen transfer mode right now. I'm gonna use the pan behind tool again to move the anchor point to the origin of this effect, which is right there. So I'm going to hold down shift and parent this layer to my magic circle layer, which will cause it to jump to the correct spot. Now, of course, I need to scale it up. Well, I'm going to change the Y rotation of it to be 90 degrees. So that way it's, I mean, it looks bad now, but now it's pointed more directly at us. But more importantly, it's pointed away from the circle. So now if we select the circle and we can change the rotation of that layer and use the lightning now as a guide, until it looks right so we can uh, determine what the correct angle is. And I'm just gonna move it away from the hand a little bit. Now just add a little bit of depth. I'm going to duplicate the electric circle, scale it down and move that forward a little bit, add maybe a fast blur to it and offset it in time a little bit. And now I think it is safe to go ahead and turn the other layers back on and let's take a look at what we have created. So of course this is just the whole thing thrown together pretty quickly, but I give it a little bit of TLC, a little bit of extra work, some color correction. You could end up with something that looks like this or something that looks completely different. You can have it look however you want. The sky is the limit. Your imagination is the only thing holding you back. Don't forget to remember to not forget to remember to check the website productioncrate.com regularly because we are always uploading new and exciting things. The coolest thing we've got going on right now, I think, are these SWAT henchmen pre-keyed elements that you can just download and drop right in to your movies. You don't have to hire actors anymore. It's pretty sweet. 
We also have a pretty good tutorial that explains how to use them, teaches you some compositing tips to make it look more like you did not just download people on the internet to use to replace your friends. You're also probably going to want to subscribe on YouTube to keep up to date with all the tutorials and the announcement videos that we're going to be uploading. We also have an Instagram and a Facebook. And then um, as always, here's my personal Twitter. If you have any questions about this effect, if you have any questions about any effect, if you have any questions about my personal life, if you have any ideas for footage that you would like me to create for you to download for free or any tutorials that you would like me to make as well, shoot them my way. All right, I'll be seeing you.